Hey guys, John Knudsen here with Bird Dog. I just want to do a quick video about upgrading firmware on your Bird Dog device. It's a super simple process and that's what we're going to cover today, so let's get to it. The first thing we want to do is go over to the device on our favorite web browser that uh, of your choosing. Go over to the device and log into it. So uh, today I'm using Chrome and my address is 7761. And so it will take me to my Bird Dog Mini that I want to update today. And uh, we just want to log in with the password that either we set or the default password, which is Bird Dog, all one word, lowercase. And here we can see the firmware version is Bird Dog Mini 262. And so today we're going to upgrade to the public beta, beta 9 version 3. Uh, so let's jump over to the system tab. And on all of our firmware versions, uh, when you log into the web UI, there will always be a system update field. And uh, that's even on the, the previous versions. Uh, there's always this option right here. And so uh, today we're going to go down to system update. Don't get confused with config. Config is a option for uploading JSON files if you're trying to talk over subnets. Uh, if you need that sort of feature, you can reach out to us at help at bird-dog.tv. We can walk you through that. But today, for firmware updates, you want to go to System Update and choose File. Now here, we're going to uh, find the firmware that we downloaded, which is here on my desktop. You can find all approved firmwares on our website, bird-dog.tv, and then go over to, um, I believe it's Product Support, and then you can find firm Firmware Updates. Uh, and there's also the public uh, betas are posted on a Facebook group called Bird Dog User Group. And you're welcome to check that out and see what the latest versions are. But be sure that when you are updating a device, you are using the correct firmware for the correct unit. There is studio upgrades and there are mini upgrades and P200s and so on. Be sure that you get the correct version for the device that you're trying to update because they are specific. Uh, so double check that. So here I am, I've selected on my desktop the firmware that I want to upgrade. I'm going to hit open and I'm going to hit update. And this is going to take us over to a little Linux script screen that is going to run the update and let me know when things are up and running. And I want to do this in real time just to kind of show you how simple this is and how I probably shouldn't take too much time. So uh, we, we just let the little Linux script run and it's going to get to a screen that says that uh, you know, please wait that the board is rebooting. And there it is right there. At this time, we wait about you know, five to 10 seconds and just give it a few minutes to uh, do what it needs to do. But then uh, after that amount of time, we can unplug the board and replug it back into power, power cycle the board, and uh, that will complete the update. Now, we're working at uh, getting this wording changed but uh, it's just kind of an oversight for the firmware. But literally, here I am unplugging the board, and now I'll plug it back in. And now we're gonna just wait for the Bird Dog Mini to uh, reboot. And the way we could just double check that easily is just hit the IP address, uh, remove anything that's on the end, but just reload the IP address. And Chrome will probably cancel out. We'll do this a couple of times but it should only take a maximum of about two to three minutes to come back to the IP that you set it at. And if you lose the IP, you can always use a program like Central Light or um, some sort of IP finder option that can help you find what the IP, if it defaulted back to the uh, original or if uh, you know maybe it was assigned a different IP through the DHCP server. But after just a couple of refreshes, here I am back at the Bird Dog Mini uh, login page. I'm going to put back in my password and I'm going to open up the Bird Dog Mini. And now it says Bird Dog Mini 3.0 Beta 9. And some of the options have changed, but the system tab is still there and the system update field is still available for the next firmware update. That's it. It's that easy. I uh, hope you found this helpful. But in the meantime, I hope you're well and we'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Take care.